So tonight, um, we are doing a little bit different format. Um, we are going to take an opportunity to, for the select board town council, um, to discuss and sit down together to discuss the AMP proposal that is outlined earlier this year. So what we're gonna do is for the first half, uh, first hour, I'm sorry, 5.30 to 6.30, we're going to have just the select board members, town council, town administrator, um, talking, there may be um, maybe one or two others, but that's the, that's the hope. It's this is our first time where the select board is having the chance to talk about it. So public participation oh, is not going to be um, part of this part. After we take a break, there'll be um, some minutes where we will allow public comment and public participation at that point. Does that sound um, April and Rita? Yep. Sound like what our plan was? Okay. So, so to introduce that, so tonight, um, the select board, um, this being the first time we have a we're having this discussion and about the proposal from AMP um, and since the March DOR meeting, uh, the select board wants to start um, by, by identifying our role in the process. Um, the select board is responsible in the normal course of events to negotiate the pilot agreement with a solar developer. That usually happens towards the end of a project. The proposal brought forward by AMP was a new co component. The new component is for the town to consider doing maintenance and operations of the solar site. Um, this arrangement, a private developer is asking the town to do operations and maintenance is a first of its kind, first of its uh, idea. Um, there are no examples for us to look to. Um, and at a meeting with DOR, uh, we gained some information. We've gained other information from other resources um, on what is not acceptable in this arrangement. Hiring a subcontractor to fulfill the maintenance operations is not an acceptable option. Um, the arrangement would have to be figured out. So secondly, um, if the town does go into an agreement to which DOR signs off on, we currently understand the developer may gain public entity status, which would normally go to a public entity. So what, what would that mean for the town? Um, this is what this is in all issues related to it that the select board wants to explore tonight in a conversation to start in the first hour, which we've just explained. Um, and then we'll take a break as I explained. So I think we should open it up to our conversation. Um, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just I also wanted to make it really clear to people because okay. from the letters we're getting, there seems to be some confusion. The select it. board does not do any of the permitting of the actual um, applications. That's a process that's through the the planning board. And I just I just feel like I, I want to make that clear because I, I people I mean we know the process and I don't think everybody does. I felt similarly too with what we got um, that it seems like there was a, a um, an air of that the that the select board could tell AMP and Coles that they couldn't do the project and that we don't have the power to do that. That's not in our purview. We so, have a planning board that does that. Yep. And they uphold our bylaws. That's their role. Okay. Anyway. All right. So let's open up our discussion. Um, where would we like to start this discussion? Donna is here to help. Go ahead, Rita. You can just jump in. Go ahead. You can unmute sure. yourself. Okay. So <laughs> just, you know, a point of clarification. Back in January of this year, mm -hmm. um, the select board received a draft, a draft memorandum of understanding mm -hmm. right. from AMP um, regarding a public-private partnership and operations um, and maintenance agreement, MOU, which at the time was, was talked about as um, potentially a first step towards then later executing a contract, an operations and maintenance contract. Um, I don't recall the exact date of the meeting, but we did have a select board meeting, which I 
believe the planning board might have been present. And Donna, I know you were, um, town council was present at that meeting. And what was determined then, um, my recollection is, is that that memorandum of understanding was uh, not anything that the town would move forward with, be, simply because it was kind of unenforceable. And I think the guidance we were getting from you, Donna, was that um, it was vague and it was, this is a very complex undertaking. Um, since that time, I don't believe we've gotten anything further um, from AMP. We did have a discussion with um, the Department of Energy Resources, myself, Becky, Michael DiChiara, Deacon Bonner, um, from the town, and then I think there were six or seven DOER staff people, um, and talked generally about um, an operations and maintenance agreement and public entity status. But I'm just, you know, I'm trying to think tonight, you know, what, what are we talking about? Because we don't have an agreement before us. Um, I know there has been mention by AMP of uh, you know, looking to, to work with the town, but what that, what that means remains to be uh, defined. Yeah, and I, I think that's a lot of what we can do here today. You know, I, I guess I've been coming from this position, like, or, or hearing from people that, you know, AMP is going to eat us alive. Um, and I don't think that's the case. I think we have a lot more status in this arrangement than maybe we we've, we've believed you know that I, I think it would be amp would want us to do this and if we're going to do this it has to benefit our town I mean that's the bottom line but anyway and uh, and to speak to Rita's comment is we don't have anything in front of us to really use as a it's kind of a conceptual conversation right Rita we don't have anything Correct. like Correct. A, a meaty um, document. <laughs> yes. well, we don't. We don't have any kind of formal proposal. I mean, there was that draft as an MOU, which I think we kind of dispensed with. Um, and in fact, when we had the meeting with DOER, um, they indicated that they would be looking for an actual contract, not a memorandum of understanding, but rather a contract, a signed mm -hmm. contract for operations and, and maintenance in order to, you know, is one of the um, uh, things that, that would qualify AMP for public entity status. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to, you know, trying to get straight what it is we're, we're accomplishing. And I know there are a lot of people here mm -hmm. and checking my numbers periodically, you know, 60 <laughs> people from town. We've heard from a lot of people um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I would reinforce what, what April said. This select board does not permit the, the solar development. Um, you know, what we're talking about tonight is whether the town, whether the select board would want to um, execute an operations and, and maintenance agreement with, mm -hmm. um, with AMP. But we, we don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not. So, Donna. It's, Sounds like yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that part of the problem with this whole concept is how little much, how little knowledge we have. Mm -hmm. You know, DOER has basically said that an MOU will not work to create public entity. And my review of the MOU was just, it, it didn't get us anywhere. It didn't pin down anything, didn't give us any information. There was absolutely no reason to entertain it at that time. Um, my understanding from the March 24th meeting, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rita, or anybody else was there, the DOER indicated that they weren't even sure this arrangement, private land, private solar company, public management, would in fact meet the public entity provision. So it seems to me that one of the points of tonight, rather than making any real decisions, is sort of outlining what questions we have that we need answers to, what information would we want that we don't have, 
so that we can begin to move forward in getting those answers, getting that information, so that if the select board's put in a position to make an informed choice on signing a contract somewhere down the road, that in fact, you have all the information you need to make that decision. And I think we're so far from that, that one of the things that we need to say back to AMP is look, we, we don't even know what you're asking of us. Mm -hmm. And so we can't possibly agree, we can't possibly negotiate a contract. Am I looking at five solar fields that would take 10 employees to manage? Am I looking at three solar fields that would take three employees to manage? How can we enter into a contract talking about somebody reimbursing us for the entire costs of management when we don't even have any information on that? Mm -hmm. So, and that's sort of going down one rabbit hole. So I think the first question is, is DOE, DOER even prepared to consider this arrangement as a public entity arrangement. If they're not, then they come in, they permit like any other solar project and we'll see what happens. If DOER is willing to entertain that, what does that mean? What does that mean, particularly in terms of them being able to build in places that may be environmentally sensitive that we don't want them building in regardless of whether they're a public entity or not what what does that mean as as far as town's participation in that so i think question one and i don't know that we can get an answer out of dor but question one is to at least communicate with doer and ask them the very specific question would they consider a private entity on private land with a town operating and maintaining the solar array fitting within their definition of public entity? Mm -hmm. Because we need that answer. We need to at least know we'll consider it. If you come up with a proposal and a, and a draft agreement that seems to have the town totally immersed in this project so we can consider it a public entity, whatever they give us back, but we need something back from them to get an idea before the select board and the town continue to spin wheels mm -hmm. around this concept um, if it's not even gonna be approved anyway. Mm. So I, I mean, I, that would be one of my first priorities is to draft a letter to DOER and ask them if they'll even entertain this. So, uh, you know, we we did it, it was a it was a relatively short meeting. I think it was all of maybe 40 minutes, but it was uh, packed in a lot um, with, as I said, I don't know if there were like 10 or 11 of us on the on the call and um, my recollection um, is that the DOR, DOER yes. staff, there were three lawyers there and I think three or four staff people did not say this could not be done. So, but what they did say is we won't know <clears throat> what a public private partnership of this, um, of this design um, we won't know it till we see it. We won't know whether or not <clears throat> we will accept this until we see what your contract is. And, you know, uh, they were pushed on that by, by, town, <clears throat> um, by town officials. And what they did agree to is they said, you know, we can't, we can't provide you any legal um, assistance, you know, you, you can't access our, uh, our, our attorneys, but we would be willing to look at um, what you're contemplating and give you some feedback, but we will not, we will not <clears throat> formally review anything until you have the agreement, the, mm -hmm. the contract. So, you know, it puts us in this um, very strange place. And I, you know, I think in part, in large part, um, that is because DOER um, didn't really envision this kind of a setup. 
you know, when they when they when they designed and, and wrote the regulations for public private partnerships, it was anticipated that there would be solar being put on <clears throat> public land, you know, with the with the benefits accruing to the municipality. So that um, you know, in a larger municipality, you might have been able to power all your municipal buildings. Right. But this arrangement, where it's simply, um, you know, where it's private land with a um, private developer, um, with the town just being, you know, serving as the operations and doing operations and maintenance, and that being the public part of the public-private partnership, <coughs> it was excuse me, it was not, was not something that they. Um, they contemplated, they haven't seen it before, they, you know, there's, there are no other examples um, in Massachusetts. So they were uh, very um, cautious. Yeah. And, well, and, I, I, and I'm not sure that we could ever get a, you know, a, you know, a, a direct answer out of them unless we had real specifics about and, what, what was in a contract. And, and that's obviously my concern because mm -hmm. we can't draft a contract until we have a lot more information about what this would look like. And what I mean by that is what facilities would be on the ground that then we would be required to manage um, that we couldn't subcontract out mm -hmm. And so what would that mean as far as number of employees? Are we really prepared to have a town the size of Shootsbury basically all of a sudden be managing large solar projects when we don't even know the number? So I think that if, and I, and I think you're absolutely right, Rita, I just don't think DOER is going to commit until there's a lot more information. And I think that if AMP really wants to go forward with this project or consider permitting it, that's where they need to start. If they, if their caveat is we can't start it without an agreement with the town, then I, I don't see how it moves forward mm -hmm. because I don't, we can't do an agreement without knowing what they're going to do. Well, it's also unclear you know, if there's any um, variation on what that agreement could be, you know, would it be possible to put, you know, for the agreement to be that, that part of the, that there is a solar array on public land in addition to the rest? I mean, is that, I don't think that's something that's even been talked about. We don't know. Um, and, and we don't even know if we want it. I mean, exactly. I think one, one of the things that, I think so concerned a lot of people was this concept that if they become a public entity, can they build in environmentally sensitive places they couldn't if they weren't a public entity. And I think that's part of the point of being a public entity under the regs. Um, and so the question becomes, could we put in our management contract that you can't take away the siting from the planning board. As you all understand, that's the planning board's decision. But could you put in the contract, for example, if you get permitted to build in environmentally sensitive areas, the, this contract's null and void and we won't be willing to manage it for you. Right. You know, I mean, do we want something of that nature to make it very clear that mm -hmm. while we love the tax base and there's certain things that are enticing about this, the lack of information, the idea that they may be able to get around environment, building in environmentally sensitive areas, that kind of thing is not something that we want mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how much of that can we control with the management contract versus the planning board controlling it under the bylaws? Right. Um, but again, here we are. Where are they going? How environmentally sensitive are the areas? You know, how big are they? You know, I mean, all without them putting plans to the planning board so that the permitting process begins, 
I don't know how the select board entertains um, maintenance and operations agreement. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even the idea of hiring an actuary to say, look, here, this is there's this many solar fields, they're this size. We need you to give us a breakdown of how many employees would be needed, the cost of those employees, how much, what equipment would be needed, the cost of that equipment, so that we, in fact, can put together a spreadsheet on the cost of this to the town mm -hmm. to pass it back to the developer. We can't even do that without some solid plans. So, you know, I, I'm not convinced that the select board moving forward first is possible without AMP going to the planning board. Yeah. Well, it's like you keep saying, what would we be moving forward with? Right. And I'm also noticing somebody has, there's some noise. I, if, if everybody Sounds could like be whack. muted. Yeah, somebody, if everybody could mute themselves, that would be really helpful. We've got 70 people in this room. So I, I think um, it's not our move. Is that's what you're saying? You know, I'm just not convinced. What I'm not convinced we have a move at this stage of the game. Without you know, without something much more concrete. Donna, um, uh, the, the only thing I wanted to add to that um, whole question of, around building and. Um, in environmentally sensitive areas, and they call it the bio biomap, and parts of the the sites are within the state's um, biomap designation. Was the the one thing that um, DOER said? Um, so if you if you get into the in, into this category one, kind of this fa fast track, because you're public entity status. Um, it does, it does, it, it says that you do not um, have to comply with those, with, with that regulation around no more than 50% of the area. Um, what DOER did, did say though, that was they do not get involved with permitting decisions and that the SMART program is really about um, financial incentives for solar development. And so they set up these criteria and then you as a solar developer get all these financial incentives through the, through the SMART program. But they do not, um, they, they, they don't get involved in anything having to do with, with permitting. So, you know, it could be interpreted that even though you get that category one status, it doesn't give you, um, a free ride in terms of um, of having to comply, and that's a that as we talk with the with the, the planning board, I'd like to hear back from them if that's in fact their um, interpretation. From well, and I think the problem there becomes their regulations say that you do get sort of a pass on those things. So, it do those regulations trump right? local law and if they do is that really something that we want to just give up or do we want to try and capture it somewhere else like in the management agreement right um it doesn't make sense for them to put that in the regs and then say any town local bylaw can trump it so what is the public entity getting then yeah right well, they're getting i mean it's it's the, i mean i get the financial piece right but <laughs> but why would they even have that then why would they just say you get this extra money yeah i i think in part they had that because if you were building on public land it's like giving yourself your own exemption but again right. you know um uh it's it's something that that i think it'd be good to hear from the the plan our our planning board I'm assuming yeah, I'm just I'm just not convinced that having that in those regs doesn't sort of trump local objection to them building in those areas, just like 40A section three trumps local zoning on religious buildings, educational st structures, that kind of thing. You know, I just think that we would want a much clearer understanding mm. of whether or not AMP could come. If we refuse 
a permit because they were going in an environmentally sensitive area, could they then appeal that decision and say that the regulation for DOER trumped the local permitting decision? So there's our first question for DOER. Yes. Well, it also sounds like this is designed, this is designed for a, a the intent was for a, a public entity to be building on our own land. And, right. and what's different here, this is private land. I don't, that's where I don't think maybe it's been thought through. Or even a private I, entity building on public land. Yes, yes, no, yes, right. yes. That's, yes. Or even a public entity building on private land. The problem is that this is <laughs> private entity building on private land and just trying to pull us in as the manager mm -hmm. to get this extra funding and stuff. And that doesn't mean it's necessarily bad, but we, we don't know what it means. And not knowing what it means puts us in a position of saying, we're interested, but we can't give you any kind of commitment. We can't move this forward without a great deal more information. Right. Because it, 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 it is an intriguing idea. And, and I think, um, as you're pointing out really clearly, there's a lot that we don't know. So how do we agree? We can't. We're just not in a position to enter any kind of agreement with them. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the applications before, um, well, and maybe we, I don't know this, but I understand that this doesn't mean that applications before the planning board for the solar far fields wouldn't happen anyway. I don't, I don't think they're linked, right. but that's not the select board's concern. Our concern right. is this particular piece, piece of it. Right. 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 All right. So there you go. So I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking our, our, I think we're maybe have a consensus here. We need a lot more information. Um, we have at least a couple of questions we go to go forward with a letter to DOR. Becky, I know you had written them down and so did I. Um, yes. And then, and then um, kind of start there and uh, from what Donna suggested, start there, gather more information and then when we have something more concrete to discuss, bring it back and discuss it again to see if it, you know, as we get information, maybe maybe it, it bubbles up again and we have another conversation like this to see if we wanna go forward with the next step. But I agree, we need more information, something concrete. Becky? Um, I just wanted to, to take this opportunity to be clear uh, with the public okay. that if at any point um, there's a contract before the select board, what, what the process is and what the um, public's involvement is with that process. Because there seems to be a lot of confusion around that too. And so if this requested contract would be for a minimum, I think, I believe of mm -hmm. 20 years, the select board would need to go to, an, uh, to a town meeting to get permission to enter a contract of that length, anything over three years. So that being the case, there would, you know, this contract would require a warrant article on an annual town meeting. So the public would have an opportunity to weigh in. And at would that, that be point. a simple majority? Vote yes. either way that, that that wouldn't require two thirds. So okay, and that too. Just to add to what Becky just said, there'd be meetings all along the way too to get it to that point. So the public could have some participation there too, right, Becky? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. That, that would be appropriate. There would be um, select board meetings ahead, right? But that would. I, I just wanted people to know that this is nothing. This is not a situation where the select board can have, you know, a, a quiet little meeting where nobody attends and sign a 20 year contract right. and, and, that nobody knows about. This is a very, um, you know, it's publicly regulated and the, the, the issue at hand is that the select board is dealing with a lot of vagaries at this point and struggling to understand how uh, the concept that's been presented can actually uh, roll out. 
and, and it is complicated by the fact this hasn't been done anywhere. It's not like we can call Leverett and said, well, how did you do this? You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. And no, so, the, so we're starting, we're, we're the ones setting maybe the standard for other towns, right? If, yeah. if it was something we entertained. And so going through the list of, of pros and con questions to look at for pros and cons, yes. you know, how, you know, how do we ask? Because we don't know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we don't know. So that, We can't even make a list of questions because we don't have enough information to even know what questions to ask yet. And right. so it's, you know, it's, it's like we've said, it's, it's an intriguing idea, but there are so many unknowns. Nobody can move forward with it until the developer becomes much more concrete in their proposal. And I agree. And if they do, I still believe that the town is in a really good negotiating position. You know, that I, and, and that um, I think that's important just to hold on to that idea if they go through, right. you know, but how do you negotiate nothing? Right. Good point, bro. Good point. All right. Okay. So, All right. <laughs> that was. That well, was is, a, is there anything we're Donna? Is there anything we're missing? You know. I I just we don't know at this stage of the game. I mean, okay. That's you know. I mean, the bottom line is, yeah. I think that you can start making lists. You know, if you want to expend the energy, start making lists about what you would want covered in the agreement. Mm -hmm. Full compensation without yeah. a the town paying a dime, number mm -hmm. of employees, um, you know, number but, of projects. But but even the number yeah. of employees, we don't have room for the staff we have. I mean, where would we put? That was one of my questions. Where would we put people? You know, and well, this remote thing is working really well. With COVID. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Put everybody I, in a computer box. I think a lot of businesses are making space decisions as they're going back. Um, number of employees and, and the other thing I thought of, um, I just lost it though. Continue, April. Oh no, I, I, I was just I was just looking over my list of and, and realizing that you know the, there is no answer at this point. And if there were a proposal, we would have answers. It's fully transparent you know, a process that the town weighs in on. And I think that's really important. There's nothing nefarious happening in this. Go ahead, Rita, you can just jump in. Jump in. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I wanna get back to, 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 to Donna's point that um, we don't know what we would be operating and maintaining. Right. And I don't think we can execute any kind of agreement until we know what we're operating and maintaining. And also, not no one that I know, um, anyway, that's that stepped forward, you know, has the expertise um, and the technical background in operating and maintaining what are, um, in essence, five mini power plants. And so, you know, I don't think, and I think Donna spoke to this at, at that me meeting, that other meeting where we talked about the MOU, you know, that we would need um, beyond an actuary, we would need um, an expert to tell us what exactly is, is involved in operating and maintaining these um, small power plants, mm -hmm. and what sort of liability does the does the town incur in taking on such a responsibility? So pretty complex. I think we would need um, a lot of a lot of assistance, but we're not there. We're not there because we don't have we don't know what we'd be operating and maintaining, and until yeah. that time. I think it's it's a discussion that we you know we we can sit here and 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 talk about it, but we don't really have a sense of of what what it is. True, uh, Becky, I see your hand. Um, so there are um, models such as like a, co a cost plus uh, operations and maintenance agreement that the town could use if it ever got to that point. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I think at this point, if we just start, we can list potential possibilities and explore if they're viable or not viable. Um, if if we get, you know if we get anything concrete enough to to determine that, and there are ways to create um, entities like enterprise funds or an entity that would um, help uh, shelter the town's liability and make it uh, unique to a specific thing. Mm -hmm. And Donna, when we get to that point, we can ask you for advice of um, around that. But I think. You know, until yeah, my concern, one of my concerns is if it's on private land owned by a private company and we're just operating it, does the Tort Claims Act protect us oh, given issue. those issues? And if it doesn't, does that mean that the town opens its up, itself up to the kind of damages that a private entity could suffer if something went horribly wrong? I mean, there's, there's so many questions like that, but spending the time and energy to research something like that now, you know, and try and figure it out when we aren't, we are so far away from agree, an agreement, you know, seems like sort of a silly waste of money until we're down to some, to caring about what that answer is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So it's um, the chicken and the egg. Yeah, still. Yeah. Yeah. So what have we got? We. I think you tell Aunt that we're, you know, it's an intriguing idea, but without a lot more specifics, the town can't move forward. Yep. And I guess I would really question about whether or not we could move forward until we have um, permits before us. Yeah before we know what the installations are, because how can you say, how can you agree to operate and maintain something that you, again, don't know what it is? I think you mean applications, Rita, right? Well, even with applications, permit. but uh, you know, applications, you know, uh, during the permitting process, a lot of things change. And mm -hmm. so um, what an application is, doesn't necessarily reflect what you know what the outcome is at the at the back end after. True, true. The, but you know. it does give a starting point, though. You it's know, at least start, a, it's defining. It's defining right. it. Yeah. And I imagine the agreement could have fluidity built into it. You know. Well, I, I don't know that you'd have to build fluidity into it, but you could start negotiating. If there was a concrete application, concrete plans that were going through, <coughs> excuse me, the permitting process then you may be able to start at least, as Rita said, getting a consultant in to talk about how many employees and what kind of equipment and what the cost is of operating right. five, so five small energy plants and mm -hmm. how many employees would that take and so that we could begin to work out the cost of it. It's not like you have to wait till the permits are final and everything's signed, sealed and delivered to basically start on the agreement but if in fact it's moving along, the permits are moving along, you could at least start, then it might be worth the, the effort to start bringing some of these people in, not for mm -hmm. final figures, because Rita's absolutely right. Until mm -hmm. the permits are in hand, you're not going to know the final figures. You're not going to be able to sign anything. Um, but you could at least be developing concepts. And that's the fluidity piece of it, right? You know, so that, um, but until until those plans are somewhere, we can't even begin to talk about that, you know, other than planning how we deal with it if the plans were there. So it, it just at this point, all we have there's nothing before us for us to make any decision. But right. to be clear, if there were. And if we did go forward and have a contract, that the town would have an opportunity to weigh in. Again, I just want people to understand that, that this is not being done in the dark of night. Um, and that the town's best interest is really what we have at heart. Thank you, April. Let it be. I would second that. <laughs> and, and, and we're all neighbors. Yes, we are all neighbors. We are neighbors, yes, <laughs> let it be. 
So do you think it's time to open it up for public comment? And